Hey everyone, Shark here. Got a 1v1 for you today on Road to Tunis. This one is a scrimmage between uh, two of my favorite players, Ares, who's ranked number 18 with the Wehrmacht, and Dumbass, rank 105. So it's really common for high-level players to have scrimmage partners so they can try out different strategies without the stress of the ladder or the elo. If you're looking to improve at the game, I highly recommend this approach to practice. I really like this match because it shows the early power of the US forces, some of the difficulties in playing in the armored battle group, the staying power of the Wehrmacht late game, and then afterwards we get to talk to both players to get more insight into their builds and their strategies. And by the way, this one is an absolute banger. All right, let's go. All right, starting out, we got Ares on the north side of the map, left side in blue with his uh, Wehrmacht getting a Ketten card out right away and having his pioneers move out to cap. And now you've got Dumbass uh, in red on the south or right hand side of the map in default view, getting his barracks out and going uh, armored right away with the assault engineers. So we are going to see assault engineers out on the field. Interesting that he went with the barracks. Uh, and so he's got a Jeep here. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see how he works this together. The Jeep obviously good with the armored battle group, but he has to get it to vet one before it can cap. Meanwhile, Aerie is going to have a lot of capping power early with this Kettenkrad. Ooh, I like this, like, arctic skin. I'm sure that guy is way overdressed for this weather, but, you know, is what it is. Alright, so a squad of Grenadiers out, and Aerie is going breakthrough immediately uh, with the MP40 upgrade unlocked. And so now we see both players basically going for their cutoff and initial fuel and then pushing out to their right-hand side. Uh, in this case, Ares using his assault engineers to cap up this munitions point in the back while his jeep goes scouting. And now uh, you can hear the Kettenkrad through the fog of war, so I wonder if he's hunting for the Kettenkrad. Nice. I like this push because now the Kettenkrad doesn't capture that fuel. The Pioneer's here to, to do some damage to the jeep. Uh, but actually, he can stay at range and kite them. Alright, MG42 now coming out for Ares and a rifle squad for Dumbass. Yeah, these pioneers are gonna take quite a bit of damage uh, over time here. Well, I say that, and he's he's slowly ticking away. There we go. There are a couple a couple shots hit. Aries going for a second pioneer now. Interestingly enough, yeah, the pioneers are forced to retreat without capping. So it looks like dumbass is gonna have a pretty significant early uh, resource advantage. Kettenkrod counter capping the opposite direction. Jeep supported by assault engineers here. But it looks like Ares is going to get this all important garrison here in the center of the map. Jeep finds a squad of grenadiers who do a lot of penetration damage. Assault engineers from Dumbass moving up to try to close Grenadier. But the grenadier is focusing the Jeep. Yeah, the Jeep forced to back away. Assault engineer is doing work in close. Oh, wow. And the Grens drop three models and force a retreat immediately. MG42, uh, I don't know why. There we go. I'm like, why is it not shooting? Rifles in green cover, so they won't be suppressed, but they will take quite a bit of damage. On the flank here, we have scouts. Uh, the Kettenkrai does manage to decap the fuel before the scouts force it away. Now we've got a mortar out for Dumbass, which is going to be really helpful in playing cat and mouse with this MG42. One of the MG42 team models drops, but the rifle's still taking some decent damage. Here come the mortar rounds. A second Grenadier coming out for Ares. Yep, and this MG42 is going to pack up. Jeep is on the flank here, as are assault engineers. So good work here by Dumbass forcing the MG42 out of that garrison. Oh, and now the flamethrower pops on the assault engineers. But actually, they're probably going to be forced to retreat. They are not in a good spot for engagement here. And the Grens can do some damage at range. Yeah, so Assault Engineers forced to retreat. Second Rifle Squad coming out now for Dumbass. So I like this. We're seeing very balanced builds from both sides. Ares now going for the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters, which makes sense given how much he's invested. One uh, MP40 package pops on a Grenadier. Meanwhile, Dumbass going for the healing, which is really important in early game. I think especially after the patch and the TTK changes, you need that early healing more than ever. Because you can't, like, the, the light vehicles are delayed enough that you can't use that 
you know, rushing a Greyhound to reduce your manpower bleed. So the best way to do it is through the, uh, the infirmary to make sure that you heal up your units in between engagements. MP40 Grand Sprint to close the distance and this rifle squad <clears throat> potentially in trouble here. Vet 1 pops on these Grands. MG42 in the background suppresses the rifle squad. Assault engineers the flamethrower force a retreat. And now the mortar rounds coming on MG42, even though it's suppressed. Grand's really bleeding this uh, flamethrower squad. And here come the rifles to close the distance. Oh man, yeah, the engineers retreat just in time. Grands drop a couple of models. In the meantime, Aerie is using the Kettenkrod to cap the cutoff. And so even though uh, Dumbass has done a really good job with his scouts counter capping, he's got no resource income right now. And then Aerie is teching into his tier three, the Panzer Grenadier Company. Another Grenadier squad upgrading the MP40s. Uh, they just provide so much to the Grenadiers. Um, they really do. Oh, okay. So the Jeep dropped the 30 cal machine gun. I like this. He doesn't need the Jeep for capping, but as it hits Vet 1, Pet and Crod, wow, perfect timing on that to decap that fuel. Meanwhile, Mortar and Rifle Squad capturing up this cutoff. So now, Dumbass has this... Uh, Machine gun coming out, and then with Ares, we see a bunker going up in his base, so he's going to have, he's going to use this for healing, right? So, when you do this, uh, it saves you the fuel, it's a manpower for the bunker, and then munitions for the uh, med station upgrade. But you do get the casualty clearing, which will minimize the manpower bleed. Rifles run into two squads MP40 Grens, and they are, they're out of position and should retreat immediately. Yeah. So they do, they drop a model, maybe lose one one or two more on retreat. So engineers catch out this MG42 team. The Jeep's gonna pursue. Not gonna get any more models though. So these assault engineers, even just a single assault engineer, uh, doing a lot of good work so far in the early game. And now Dumbass teching the mechanized support center. Kettenkrod, again, Ares has this timing down exactly right. Manages to decap the manpower point. And then get away without taking too much damage. Now, these Grenadiers, in a good position to challenge, I, they have to know that this uh, 30 cal is here. On the opposite side of the map, Jeep being pushed back by a couple of Pioneers, supported by Scouts. And now Panzer Grenadier is coming out for Ares. Meanwhile, Dumbass floating quite a few resources. So we'll see what his approach is. Well, oh, one Pioneer squad could go down. Engineers here. Uh, squaring off with MP40 Grens. The mortar round comes in. Very timely mortar to turn that engagement. The Pioneers do eventually force off the Jeep and the Scouts. And the combination of the 30 cal and the flamethrower enough to force the Grens to retreat again. I really like the use of this assault engineer from dumbass and now some of the utility here putting mines down as well um, he's used that really effectively especially with the upgrades to the flamethrower more mortar rounds coming in on this mg42 and it's going to be forced to displace meanwhile a rifle squad occupies one of the smaller garrisons over here panzer grenadiers and panzer grenadier officer officers quarters coming in to give them additional veterancy uh which will also help if he ends up getting any pack 40s. Meanwhile, Dumbass gets a third rifle squad and it starts to unlock the ARs. Jeep tangling with pioneers over here on the flank. Now here come the Pgrens moving in on the rifle squad. Mortar and support working on the MG42. Now if they stray too close to the central garrison, the 30 cal may uh, be able to do some damage. Ooh, MG42 is going to get away with just one model. The Panzer Grenadier suppressed just in time to prevent them from getting the bundle off. And here come rifles closing the distance. Now, we'd love to see Dumbass take these rifles and throw them on the retreat path. Grenadiers hit that mine that the assault engineers laid. As does a Kettenkrod. So good mines from the assault engineers. The Kettenkrod is gone. 
So Ares unlocking the uh, the two five one character uh, carrier with uh, Stoss Troopin, and I think be interested to see if he goes for that. The Stummel is a really good counter to USF infantry heavy builds, especially without a lot of hard AT on the ground. The MS hasn't built his motor pool yet. He's floating a ton of manpower and fuel. He's unlocked the Wrecker. Now, Panzer Grenadiers and a Grenadier squad advance on two rifles and garrisons. Here comes the Bundle Grenade. Oh, I like that. Good, not just leaving the building, but the dodge. And now Panzer Grenadiers take over the building. They're going to be much harder to kill. I wonder if the Mortar will shift uh, its priority. Pioneers here hit a mine. Grenadiers on the flank, pushing away the scouts. And then engineers are going to have to fight off these pioneers on their flank. Machine gun force out of position. Hands are going to do with the mortar rounds come in force to retreat. And so dumbass holds the line here in the center. Now it looks like he's flipping his infantry and his jeep over to this, the flank here to deal with these grenadiers. Now dumbass going straight for the motor pool. So there's a little bit of risk here in that he's not going to have access to good AT for a minute. I am interested, and I'll ask him about the decision to skip. These guys lay a mine here? They did. They need to not stand on it, though. That makes me nervous. Here's the, uh, the 251 with the Stoss Troopin. The rifles right now with a single bar will not hold up to Stoss Troopin. And I actually don't... Yeah, they immediately retreat. I don't recall uh, seeing grenades teched either. Yep, and there, there comes the Stummel package on the 251. So Ares finally taking back control of the center of the map here. And Dumbass has had a slight resource advantage for most of the game. But hasn't, other than owning kind of the central VP area of the map in this garrison, hasn't been able to translate it into significantly different fuel income. As you see, they're both at plus 23. Tank Depot almost complete. A fourth rifle squad coming out for Dumbass now. Pioneers starting to wire off all this green cover. Which I admire having the presence of mind during this engagement to, to wild off. That's the advantage of having the second Pioneer squad. Ooh, the 30 cal able to suppress the Panzer Grins and the Stoss Troopin. Uh, Schummel Barrage coming in on that machine gun though. It's going to do some damage. Engineers close the distance and they're going to use the flamethrower here to try to force this off. Oh, there's the red phosphorus grenade. But that infantry blob force retreat. Oh, they might pick up this pioneer here on retreat if they focus fire. Mine hits the other pioneer, unfortunately. Oh, uh, yep. Pioneer picked up. Over here, riflemen in cover are going to get forced away by the uh, double MP40 grenadier. Did he pick up a second flamer or did he give that to? No, the rifles got picked up. I was going to say, you get a second flamethrower on that engineer. Now, I'm I'm really interested in what Dumbass's thought process is with the mechanized support center when he has access to, to easy eights via the battle group. So I guess that'll be revealed to us as he makes his choices here. Pack 40 on the field now for Ares, so he is moderately prepared. I'm sure he's trying to figure out what Dumbass is doing here. Mortar forces away the MG42, which will allow the scouts to cap up this VP. Rifle squad here, gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Stummel. And again, no AT guns, so instead, Dumbass going to get uh, a Hellcat out. There we go. Rifles tangling with the Grenadiers. Rifles in this garrison. Oh, and Ares using the breakthrough ability to try to speed up capture here and gain a fuel advantage. Here comes the bundle. Oh, Dumbass sees it coming, though, and exits the correct door to avoid getting smoked on, uh, on exit. Now the rifle's going to focus down the Stoss Troop in here, as will these Assault Engineers. Stummel in support. Hellcat coming in to chase the Stummel, and then Stummel retreating back to the safety of the Pack 40. 
Takes one hit. Rifle's pushing on these Stas trooping, trying to see if they can get... Maybe they can get a kill here. Hellcat's going to chase into the base. There's nothing to prevent it from diving that shimmel, but backs out. Here's the pack 40 to get another shot off. Rifle's chipping away at the pack. So they'll knock it down to just... Oh, there we go. It's cleared. But now this Hellcat's going to have to back up. Oh, and then Mechanized Center repairs right there on the fuel point. Meanwhile, Pioneer is getting challenge or challenging this mortar team. And Ari is now getting his Panzer Company out. The 30 cal in the big garrison here forces those Pioneers to retreat. Rifles on the retreat path. Doing quite a bit of damage. They might pick up this Pioneer squad on retreat. Now, the Stummel is going to come in and do enough damage to save the day. Uh, the Grens using their Vet 1 ability, doing a lot of damage to these rifles. Stummel, you see smoke coming in on the MG to prevent the suppression. Dumbass wisely going to back his MG out and try to put him in position to suppress the Panzer Grenadiers, who it looks like are just going to jump into this garrison. Yeah, Panzer Grenadiers forced it apart by the mortar. Dumbass doing some counter capping on the flank with scouts and rifles, but he still needs to pick up that fuel. He's floating a ton of manpower. Oh my gosh, the Hellcat whiffs yet another shot on the Stummel. Oh, Stastrup and find a mine. And the center garrison officially knocked down. MP40 guns force the rifle squad away again. But it looks like Dumbass will maintain at least two of the three VPs. This Hellcat's got to be careful. Now, there's no Kettenkrod to spot, but you still don't want to get caught give a free shot with the Pack 40. Alright, so Dumbass now unlocking War Machine. If he's waiting for Seek and Destroy, he has one more VP or a command point. Oh, these engineers taking a ton of damage from this stumble. The pack 40 in ambush on the rear. Hellcat misses. Engineers grab the points so they're able to back up. Ooh, Hellcat's got to back up. Pack 40 will get another hit. And so the Hellcat's off for repairs. Rifle staying with MP40 Grenz. Brumbear on the way for Ares. And Dumbass really needs to do something with this spare manpower. You know, maybe, it sounds ridiculous, maybe if uh, fuel cash or munitions cash. Um, this is, without a motor pool, you know, ordinarily I'd say get a couple of AT guns out, but he doesn't have that option. He could always side tech to weapon support center, which is only 10 fuel. Uh, potentially get some bazooka squads out. Uh, Panzer are going to do this with that vet one ability, just shove away the rifle squad with the flamer. And now we're going to see tier 4 officer's quarters for Ares, so really investing a lot in the performance of his units in early veterancy. 30 cal uh, going after the Stas Troopin, but they're in green cover, and so they immediately drop two models and are forced to retreat. Stummel on the flank, supported by MP40 Grenadiers who charge in. The rifles got to get out of here. And they do. Brumbear hits the field here. Oh, one more good attack ground onto this rifle squad. But he won't take the shot. Dumbass unlocking Seek and Destroy. So the EZ-8 production available to him at this point. And with War Machine, you'd think that's what he would go for. Cheeky mind being laid here by Pioneers. There we go. A Hellcat gets a shot off on the Brumbear. Grenadiers come in. Oh, hit hit a mine. Unable to Faust. Using the breakthrough ability, so Ares will rapidly get a triple cap here. Oh, I take that back. Dumbass has got the center at least neutralized. Panzer Grenadiers finally forced away by the Jeep and the assault engineers here. Brumbear relocating into the center. 
Oh, these riflemen, yeah, I'd say they're in some serious danger. Second pack 40 on the way out now. And Ares, or Dumbass, going for a regular M4A1 Sherman? It's an interesting choice. Because he can just unlock the EZ8 production, right? Like, I'm not... I'm not taking crazy pills, am I? I mean, on top of the additional penetration from the 76mm gun, the EZ-8 gets increased moving accuracy because of the um, horizontal volume spring suspension that the model is known for. Stummel bombarding looks like the mortar as the Sherman forces away those grenadiers. I wonder if he went for the uh, rearm and refit to get the canister rounds. Oh, Hellcat takes a lot of the health from the Stummel, but the Pack 40 is going to do the same to the Hellcat. Sherman able to finish the Stummel off. So nice pickup by Ares. Not Ares, dumbass. <laughs> Actually, he's got. Ares kind of on the back foot. Ares using the superior team weapons from the Wehrmacht to set up a strong point here in the center. But there's danger in letting the allies own the flanks. Now, uh, two rifle squads going up against these Panzer Grenadiers. Vet 1 ability increases their damage output significantly. Wow, they're just not dropping. There we go. Now they start to drop a couple models. Here comes the bundle grenade. The mass drops it, uh, dodges it by advancing. The Sherman over here gets a couple of shots off. Doesn't do a ton of extra damage. It earns veterancy one, though. Pack 40 is out of position uh, to deal with the Sherman, but supporting the Brum Bear. Man, units all over the map continue to find mines. It's a really creative mine placement, both players. Looks like Ares is going to focus on regaining his fuel here. He's got the Brum Bear moving in on the rifles, and he's got his two Pack 40s in support. His Grenadiers here are getting kited by a Jeep and a Grenadier. So Sherman and Hellcat moving in, but wow, the Sherman about to go down to these. Pa oh, it just clears the arc. And now, okay, Sherman knocked out by the double Pack 40. Hellcat still, and Seek and Destroy pop, which allows for a vision bonus and a rate of fire bonus. Oh, it hits the mine. The Brum Bear is one shot, but so is the Hellcat. Oh, the Pack 40s just can't find it. There we go, Brum Bear down. And somehow the Pack 40s overturn, but there's no way this Hellcat's gonna escape. Pack 40s finally turn and set up and knock it out. I think you would take a Hellcat for a Brum Bear. I don't know that you take a Hellcat for a Hellcat and a Sherman for a Brum Bear. So now another rifle squad hitting the field for dumbass. MG42 suppressing these rifles in the center. Now Gren's come in to contest. MG or the 30 cal in the back suppressing, and now Ares getting a mortar out. There we go. So, dumbass has tech grenades. And it looks like he will hold on to the center and the East VPs here. Resources are back to uh, to parity. Ares has enough fuel for whatever he needs. And here we go. All right. So we're seeing a cash. Uh, so some of this spare manpower being invested into additional fuel income. The rifles advancing on sauce trooping. They trigger their Vet 1 ability, and now we're going to use the Red Phosphorus Grenade, which is good because it prevents Port on them from being used effectively. And now with the Panzer Grenadiers in support, here comes a grenade onto the Stoss Troop, and they're forced to move. The other Rifle Squad closing with... So, the Rifles shouldn't win this. Yeah, and they're, you see they're slowly losing both of these engagements. The Wehrmacht units pick up quite a bit of veterancy in the process. Mortar in support does a little bit of damage and forces a retreat. Now smoke coming in to allow the pioneers to cap the center VP. Well, MP40 Grens uh, cap up the east side, so Ares about to get the triple cap back. 
30 cal now being targeted by the Granat Verfa. So another cache going down for dumbass. And he has unlocked the EZ8 production. So it looks like we will see the EZ8's good all purpose vehicles available. Ares only one point away from unlocking a Tiger. And he's very close in terms of uh, manpower and fuel as well. Granted, the ears challenging rifles. Rifles supported by a scout and a jeep. Oh, here comes a grenade. Uh, no real damage. But the Grenadiers eventually retreat. So now the rifles in the Jeep are going to shift to the second Grenadier squad to recap this fuel. Man, this rifle squad taking a ton of damage. Sprinting to close the distance. And here's another uh, 75 mil Sherman. Just not doing much damage to those Grenadiers on retreat. Dumbass's infantry take over the uh, the west side VP here. Guys are going to do some south trip and trying to close the distance. Grenade hits. Man, the rifleman just can't stand up over time without without the survivability from the infantry support center. Uh, they just can't take even fights like that. They're just going to lose every time. Rifleman will cap up the center here. Yep, Tiger immediately hits the field for Ares. And now Dumbass is in kind of a rough spot. He does not have the massed AT firepower that he really needs to deal with the Tiger. Uh, really, if I were him, I'd try to steal one or two of these pack 40s. Rifleman force off the Grenadiers before they're forced to retreat. Assault engineers and another rifle squad coming in to prevent uh, areas from capping the center VP. Yeah, they're forced off, supported by the uh, the 75 mil Sherman. Here comes the Tiger with a couple, uh, one camouflage pack 40, the other on the flank here, which I actually like that they're separated. Yeah, Demes reacts by immediately calling out a Hellcat. Oh, that Jeep. Somehow survives a hit from the Tiger. It must be the uh, adamantium used by General Motors at the time. So the Tiger is going to post up here in the center, and it looks like Ares is going to be able to take control. Assault engineers. Oh my gosh, they got to get out. Stoss troop and do so much damage. The assault engineers will get away. A mortar round comes in. Blows a grenade. Oh, one Stoss remaining in the squad. Maybe the rifles could, and they do, they pick him up. So good grenade, good mortar. And then here comes the rifle horde in the center. MG42 in the rear provides some suppression. As a 30 cal suppresses the Panzergrins as well. Hellcat looking to get in some shots on the Tiger. Rifle squad looking to flank here, but gets caught up in the AOE suppression. And now these MP40 grunts force off the op the rifle squad on the opposite side of the field. Meanwhile, scouts doing some deep counter capping. Mortar doing damage to this MG42. Yeah. Hit. There we go. There's a hit from the Hellcat. Immediately traded by a Pack 40. And the Hellcat round does 120 damage per shot, but the AT gun does 160, and the Tiger does 240. So a single Hellcat, not going to be enough in this scenario. The 75 mil Sherman coming over here. Man, you would really love to see that do a little bit more damage to those Grenadiers. Oh, boy. Tiger whiffs its shot under the rifleman, hitting the wall instead. Oh, there we go. Next shot knocks out three models. No follow-up shot, though. Dumbass gonna continue to try to put pressure on from a VP perspective. Now, Ares only a little bit of fuel away from being able to get another vehicle out, so be interested to see if he goes for a Panzer IV or a Brumbear. Not much in the way of vehicles for him to counter right now for Dumbass. And now the Granat Bearfer kind of shows the setup back here, and it, it is going to be a Panzer IV anyway. 
Oh, well, Hellcat is going to immediately have to back up in the face of that pack 40 fire. Yeah, and the rifleman, you don't want to continue to have these riflemen just eat rounds from the tiger. It does too much damage. Ooh, Sherman comes in, trying to get gets a couple of hits on the pack 40. I thought I heard an airburst barrage coming in. Yeah, okay, so the mortar clears the Gunnot Barfer. Now the 75 mil Sherman here to support the rifles against this Grand Squad. It gets snared. Here's the P4. The Sherman should be okay with the rifle support, especially with the Hellcat nearby. MP40 Grens capture the uh, east side VP. Now it looks like they're going to foul the Jeep. Oh, and that's enough to knock it out. So, Dumbass was relying on that Jeep for quite a bit of kind of map awareness and reconnaissance ability that he, he no longer has. Now you've got a second Hellcat on the field for Dumbass and the side skirts. I think Dumbass, even though he has the VP advantage, um, his KD advantage has gone away. It went from being like 40 to 25, now 87 to 104 in the opposite direction. So the quality of the Wehrmacht units in the late game coming in to make a big difference. Oh, that bundle grenade does a ton of damage to that rifle squad. Tiger knocks out one on retreat. And now, I wonder what Dumbass's thought is here. It looks like he's trying to set up with a kind of defense on the west side. It is, is the answer here to try to spread out the Wehrmacht player, right? Because you've got this strong point here in the middle. Granat Fair for a 2-pack 40s, MG42, and a Tiger, plus now a P4. I wonder if it makes sense to play to try to play on the flanks and just not break in the middle well the tiger is going exploring based on the uh the flare from the mortar hellcat trades a shot but just out of position second hellcat returns mortar force to retreat by the tiger tiger chips away at the uh the fuel cache here and neither of the hellcats really in a rush to challenge the tiger Oh, good grenade. Yeah, forces them out of cover briefly. Here's the Sherman. They are kind of clumped up. He's got one more shot before the Panzer IV shows up. So the riflemen win that engagement. Panzer IV arrives on the scene, and now the Tiger rotating over. A third Hellcat now for Dumbass. Meanwhile, a Pioneer coming out for Ares. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You need those repairs. When you have heavy, like a couple pieces of heavy armor in the field, you got to keep them topped up. All right, so dumbass going for a little Hellcat pack here, and he's he's using the lead that he built up for VPs to basically not go for the cap here. He's doing okay on fuel for right now because he grabbed uh, areas fuel on the flank. Oh, this P4 dug in mortar doing a ton of damage. Oh, rifle squad knocked out by a tiger. But here's the advance. Seek and destroy. Popped. Oh. Collateral damage from the mine. Tiger engine critted as well. One Hellcat goes down. Tiger destroys. Second Hellcat. Or no, that was the 75 mil Sherman goes down. The Hellcat's focusing fire on the rear of the P4. They will all go down supported by the uh, Pack 40s. But the satchel charge from the engineers cleans up the Panzer IV. We've got a hard reset right now on vehicles across the map. Oh, love to see the bodies go flying too as the mortar rounds come in. And Dumbass has translated that push into a recoup of the center VP. Wow, love the satchel play from the assault engineers. The problem though is, for Dumbass, is his infantry He's outclassed right now. One on one, the rifle's still going to struggle against the Grand MP40, so depending on how the engagement is set up. The Triple Vet Panzer Grenadiers are an absolute menace. And those two pack 40s are going to limit the ability 
<laughs> Good use of the stealth recon here by dumbass. The spot. Here's the airburst barrage. MG42 recouped. Yeah. So Ares is going to grab the center. Now we're about to see Granadver for rounds come in on the uh, that one mortar back here. Another P4 on the way. Now behind the smoke, uh, these riflemen gonna cap up the center. Another rifle squad recapturing the fuel on the other side. Oh, good use of the machine gun and the engineers to force these grens off. But right now, Dumbass has no answers to this P4 that's hitting the field. Oh, I like the sprint through the smoke to close. Grenade onto the machine gun. Oh, picking it up. That's too risky. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, he did it. Will they get away? Probably not. Oh, no. There's no way. Hellcat out now for Dumbass. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the MG42 stolen. So many lives lost for one machine gun. But that solves one of his big problems there. Now the Panzer IV, thinking it's unopposed, gonna push the opposite side of the, the south side or west side here. Looking at the assault engineers. Now Ares building a bunker in the middle. Will the Hellcat come to the flank? Engineers gonna lose, take a lot of damage capturing the spot. Gonna retreat. Hellcat lands a decent shot. Oh my gosh, one more shot and these engineers could go down. But they're gonna get away. A couple good hits onto this P4 from the Hellcat. Grenadiers coming in for the double snare. Yeah. Meanwhile, opposite side of the map, Panzer Grenadiers force off a rifle squad. So Ares still with the VP uh, momentum here, two to one. 30 cal is going to secure the west side VP for dumbass. Rounds. Spread out, Kinder. And now these Panzer Grenadiers are going to take this fuel away. And dumbass has been floating manpower all game. What he really needs is the additional fuel income so he can continue to get out these vehicles. 70 fuel for a Hellcat feels like a bargain against 110 for the EZ8, 100 for the P4, and 180 for the Tiger. Yet. Yeah, and he needs to prevent Ares from decapping this point because he's free repairs. Uh, he's going to lose access to them for sure. Good use of the Granatwerfer's flare round. Uh, that's a great vet one ability. Uh, provides a lot of map awareness. More pioneers out now for Ares. Hands are going to do his retreat in the face of the MG. So the, the riflemen are going to grab the east side BP. So dumbass gonna flip the uh, VP pressure around, but he's basically at VP parity right now. And here we go, the P4 healed up, pushing out again to, to push away this MG. Here we go, now Ares getting an MG42 in the bunker up here. Hellcat moving out to counter this Panzer IV. <clears throat> now pack 40 in reserve this time. Second P4 on the way for Ares. See, so looks like Dumbass really starting to feel the impact of this fuel harassment. He's just not able to field vehicles at the same rate uh, as Ares with the Wehrmacht, and that's really what you need. We go, Granatver for counter barraging this M1 mortar, who's trying to knock out this bunker. Oh, and this Hellcat coming up against two Panzer IVs, even if she support, this is potentially dangerous. Pack 40s on the flanks. Hellcat whiffs a shot here. One Panzer IV gonna get snared, but not enough for an engine crit. Second Pack 40 on the way over. Hellcat doing a good job of staying out of the range of the Pack 40s. And now, the assault engineer is doing a ton of work to this MG bunker. Good flank on it. Flamethrower doing extra damage thanks to this patch. Oh, good placement from the machine gun. Oh, no. Faust plus a pack 40 shot knocks out the Hellcat. And so these riflemen now alone and unafraid against the Panzer IV are forced to retreat. Scouts here in the center take a lot of damage from the MP40 Grens. 
And so even though Dumbass has picked up this east side of the map, he's about to lose the center. Can... Oh, Satchel comes in. The Gren sprints away. Yeah, Assault Engineer is forced to leave. This MG uh, captured... Or no, this is the 30 cal. 30 cal moves up here to try to grab this VP. Now, Dumbass going for a weapon support center. Victory point lost. Gotta be for bazooka squads with some of the spare manpower to help deal with these vehicles. Now get back in the fight. Yeah, I wonder what his next choice is going to be. Ares getting a Stoss Trooping squad out, which I think is smart. That additional anti-infantry firepower, especially with all these machine guns, you can, if you can catch the flank of a machine gun with a Stoss squad, you can do a lot of damage. Both Panzer IVs now completely healed up. I like, again, that these packs are kind of in different lanes. Bazooka Squad coming out for Dumbass. Yeah, Riflemen up against these P4s are just going to bleed, especially with the Panzer Grenadiers on the Assault. The 30 cal suppresses the Grenadiers and pins them and prevents them from capturing the point. Scouts will be able to grab the center VP. Panzer Grenadier is 1v2ing uh, rifle squads here and winning. Funnel grenade and both are forced away. Dumbass now has the fuel for an easy 8. Bazooka squad on the field, a second one being built. In the center, assault engineers and scouts are going to about to get forced off this VP by the Stoss Trooper and Grenadiers. Oh, the Bazooka Squad just bleeds like crazy. And now the P4 is on the retreat path, these Assault Engineers. Oh no, the Vet3 Assault Engineers go down. Easy 8 pushing out. Forces away the Panzer Grenadiers. But these P4s are still running rampant across the map. And they're going to swing around to focus down this Rifle Squad. Oh, if he gets this pick up here... That's going to really, really hurt. They'll get away. Now, Dumbass pushing back out with rifle squads and some bazookas in support. He pulls up the 30 cal to try to suppress this Axis infantry. Easy 8 trading shots to the P4s. Man, the rifleman just getting burned down. They're forced to retreat. Oh, man, the shots from the P4s. Meanwhile, the Stoss Troop been taking a ton of damage, but not dropping any models. And here come the Bazookas. P4 is focusing fire on the Bazooka squads. Bazookas get off a good volley. But the Pack 40 is going to force the Easy 8 away. And the Pioneers will out DPS these Bazooka squads. And now, yep, and that's going to be it. All right, so starting with the Axis build order here, Ares selecting the Breakthrough Battle Group pretty much right away. Pioneers, Ket and Krod, Tier 1 start, uh, selects his Battle Group, then gets two Grenadiers, an MG42, and a second Pioneer. That's a lot of utility early. It's an interesting build. He doesn't overinvest into the Grenadiers, and I think it pays off into his late game. He gets the Tier 1 Officer's Quarters Veterancy Upgrade, which is a theme throughout this match. Uh, he goes for the Panzer Grenadier Company, the Tier 3, then he gets a medic bunker out, and so this is not the typical medic upgrade, but he builds a bunker in his HQ and uses a munitions upgrade. This saves him from cost, uh, from paying fuel for it and also gives him the casualty clearing, which helps with manpower bleed later. He gets a squad of Panzer Grenadiers out. He gets the tier 3 veterancy upgrade. Then he calls in the mechanized assault group for the 251 half track that he converts to the Stummel, and then he gets a Stoss Troop and squad with it. So at this point, he's got a lot of high-end infantry, his Grenadiers or the MP40 scale pretty well, and depending on the engagement, can hang with the rifles. The Panzer Grenadiers and the Stoss Troop, and especially with the Veterancy upgrades, absolutely stomp the American infantry getting into the late game. Then uh, he gets a Pack 40. He builds his Tier 4, uh, gets a Brumbear out, gets the Tier 4 Veterancy upgrade. Again, huge for the Stoss Troop and for the Brumbear for the P4's late game. Makes a lot of sense. He builds a second Pack 40. He gets a mortar out, which I think is a smart choice. A lot of players are reticent to like back tech or side tech, but the utility he gets from it, especially the vision, the flare that it gets at Vet 1, super useful. Then he finally gets on CPs, uh, unlocks the Tiger, brings that one in. 
gets a Panzer IV to support it. Um, <clears throat> at this point, he's pretty close to pop cap, so he uses some of his fuel on side skirts, which is a good good upgrade. Uh, obviously, the Tiger and the P4 get knocked out. He gets a second Pioneer, like a replacement Pioneer. Um, gets another replacement Pioneer. Uh, ends up building three more Panzer IVs over the course of the game. It's the last two that really make a make a difference. Uh, and then calls on a Stoss Troop and Squad towards the end of the game to help him close things out. On the battle group side, obviously the MP40 package upgrade, the breakthrough tactics that allows him to rapidly capture uh, and neutralize territory, the mechanized assault group up, uh, option for the 251 and the Stoss. Uh, he gets rapid production. Obviously, he gets the uh, the Blitzkrieg tactics and then unlocks the Tiger. And now for Dumbass, the allied player, uh, starts with a scout, gets a barracks, uh, goes armor battle group and immediately gets an assault engineer out, right? So a uh, twist on the traditional start with the scout and an engineer uh, with the assault engineer, you get a little bit, uh, you get that fifth model, a little bit extra damage. Um, then he, with his barracks, builds a jeep, a rifle squad, a mortar, and then a second rifle squad. So he also has a really wide ranging build at the start. Um, he keeps the jeep alive through most of the game. Like I love the way the utility, utility that he found there with it. Um, I love the balance in the build using the engineer to support and push units out of cover uh, makes a lot of sense, especially the way that Wehrmacht units like to play um, in green cover at long range. That's a lot of uh, utility and value he gets there. Uh, from here, he goes for the medic tent because he's got to stop the bleed, and it's effective. As you notice, as he goes through the game, he's floating a lot of manpower, which we'll talk about later. He uses the veteran C1 on the Jeep to deploy an HMG, which he recruits back at his base. That machine gun ends up being super useful as well and kind of controlling access freedom of movement, especially through the center of the map. He goes for the mechanized support center, which I, I like the choice. Unfortunately, the only thing that he really uses it for is the free repair point. Um, we can talk about that some more later. Gets a third rifle squad, text BARs, then he skips straight to tier four. And I think this is where his build order kind of goes awry. And we'll talk about it more later. But he gets a fourth rifle squad. He's floating a ton of manpower. He's trying to figure out what to do with that. If you had the motor pool, the normal answer is to get an AT gun or two out because you know the late game armor is coming. The fuel resources have been about even at this point. So if you're building tanks, you can expect your opponent to be building tanks. Uh, gets a Hellcat. Gets the M4A1 Sherman, which is another interesting choice that I plan on talking to him about. Text a grenade package. Gets a fifth rifle squad out. Uh, then a, a replacement M4A1 Sherman. Um, that gets knocked out. He goes for three uh, M18 Hellcats, makes a big move, loses everything, uh, gets another Hellcat towards the end of the game there. Uh, it eventually gets knocked out as well. The triple vet pack 40s are just a menace. Um, replaces one of his lost rifle squads, bringing him back up to three. Late game, he techs weapon support center uh, and gets two bazooka squads out in an effort to try to like deal with the Panzer IVs. It's just too little too late. They're too squishy, no veterancy. Uh, he gets an easy eight out towards the end of the game, but it's not enough to save him, and he throws in the towel. From a battle group perspective, he starts with the assault engineers, unlocks the wrecker. He's really waiting for the uh, war machine for the cheap manpower vehicles. Then he goes for rapid production, uh, seek and destroy, which he uses a couple times to really uh, make his pushes count, and then the easy eight production since he already has the tank depot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so uh, so we're back. We're having a good time. Uh, I got uh dumbass and aries in here um it, i i constantly trip on your name because it's, it's easier to read dumbass but i know you're not an idiot What's at least up, not guys? in this game my name's dumbass <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks to dumbass for joining us again yeah hey uh so red dumbass uh what what were your thoughts coming into this this particular matchup because i know you guys scrim quite a bit so is there something in particular that you wanted to work on uh so actually this is our first time playing against each other i'm pretty sure if not one of our first we don't we don't often play i mean we're we're, we're a twos team so uh we usually are are playing auto match together this is just kind of a friendly game between two teammates uh i think i had gotten tired of uh random twos cues or you know mm -hmm. playing twos in auto match that day and Aries convinced me to hop on for one more. Uh I didn't really have any, you know, this is a pretty casual matchup. Like I wasn't uh looking to play like tournament style or anything. So I was just kind of doing my own thing. Um honestly, like I like that. 
because you did some interesting things. Um, so you went armored, but you didn't play the meta for the armored battle group in 1v1, right? So um, I love the way that you started with assault engineers, but didn't go straight into like engineer spam, right? You basically use a battle group to get a better engineer out on the field. And then like throughout the game, you paired them with the rifles and with the machine gun and in some cases with the scouts in a way that made a lot of sense. Um, one of the things I'm noticing is that the flamethrower in the new patch, it does a lot of damage to clumped up infantry, but it won't really drop models. And so using engineers to hit units that are in cover and then following up with a, a separate unit with its rifles, scouts, whatever, to actually do the DPS to knock the models down, it seemed to be working for you for a while. So um, I was really impressed with that play. And then the, the satchel kill onto the Panzer IV was pretty fucking epic. <laughs> that was yeah. one of the highlights of the game for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I often forget that that's in my tool belt, so I'm, I'm glad that I remembered at that specific time. Yeah, I think this is a build that I've been messing with in auto match, especially in 1v1 with the Assault Engineer into Jeep. Get the Jeep to Vet 1 instead of going for capping, uh, mm -hmm. going for the machine gun deployment just because I'm a, a fan of motor pool. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so I feel like um, the access to machine guns is just super important for like controlling long range engagements against Axis, which is why I've enjoyed that build so much. It'll mm -hmm. also just psychologically incentivizes the Jeep to harass instead of back cap, which means you're going to get more value out of it. Um, yeah, and, you did keep it alive for a long time. Right, so, and it, it scales yeah. as a recon unit because you get the the you know captain upgrade map hacks or whatever, which mm -hmm. means that you always get value out of the unit, provided that you invest that fifty manpower to uh, put the the captain on there. So, you know that's that's really the the gist of the build is is get the machine gun out so that you have long range control and some some area denial uh, to mm -hmm. counter axis blobs and then. You know the uh, the the early game is pretty dynamic because you you can just feel free to harass with the jeep. Yeah, I I felt like you did a good job of keeping your your two rifle squads in the right spots and using your utility units to support. Um, that's something that I know that I struggle with is uh, like keeping my combat units where where they're most value added. Um, I will say, just looking at your build, and and I know we talked about this offline. Skipping the motor pool was a little risky. Um, I think earlier on, a weapon support center into maybe a half track uh, might have been a decent choice for you. You get the 75 mil, and that gives you some some lighter AT. But really, like we talked about, your problem was that you lacked the hard AT. Uh, the Brumbear hit the field, and you're like, oh man, I really need this. But you were already committed at that point to going for the tank depot. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think, I, uh, you know, in, in a regular match, I absolutely would not have done that. Um, that was you know I wanted to see if I could close the game out early with with a motor with a with a tank depot rush. I always mm -hmm. go motor pool, pretty much always. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that lack of access to AT guns really hamstrung me in the in the late game. Um, but yeah, that was uh that was kind of a you know a very ballsy move that kind of paid off, kind of didn't. Um, once again, you know, motivated by the fact that this was just kind of a friendly scrim, no elo on the line. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're willing to try some stuff. And like, I get that. I think this is actually a consequence of the patch, right? With light vehicles being so much more expensive. It's, it's a temptation to just kind of skip straight to the late game. Um, and, and that manpower float, you ended up building five rifles. This is the other big risk of the American Armored Battle Group is like you don't get access to the elite infantry. And rifles do okay when you get them BARs, you get them some veterancy. Um, but the Wehrmacht infantry just scale so much better. Uh, so yeah, we talked about a couple things you could have sunk the manpower into caches earlier. You eventually got them up. Um, but think about how powerful it would have been if you had gotten them, you know, 15 minutes prior. I should have gotten a fuel cache on, on that close fuel at least 10 to 15 minutes prior. And that would have made all the difference in being able to mm -hmm. afford, um, the, uh, the mechanized upgrades. Mm -hmm. Cause that was the plan was, you know, you don't have access to elite infantry, but if I spam Sherman's with canister shots and then they also can do damage to tanks because you can swap them over instantly. That was the philosophy. Uh, yeah. That wasn't possible because of what I was... I, as soon as the Tiger hit the field, I, I had to transition into Hellcats. I didn't have an option. The EZ-8 yeah. is great and all, but it's more expensive 
and it doesn't have the canister shot, and that's what I wanted against the uh, the Stoss Troopman. So that was yeah. kind of the plan, and it didn't go my way. But um, yeah, some some off meta build there. Yeah, I think the M4A1 needs some love. Um, it really doesn't have a ton of strength. It's kind of like a, a do everything unit, but it does it all poorly. I think um, it should be discounted by ten fuel. If it's if it's gonna remain in the role that it is. It mm-hmm. should probably be on par with the Panzer III in terms of cost. Uh, yeah. It obviously scales well with the upgrades, but that, I mean, the 76 upgrade is a huge 40 fuel investment, right? So yeah. that's almost half of a tank. You really have to pick and choose when you're going to pull the trigger on that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, by the time you have an army of two or three Shermans and you've, you've clicked that button, the game is usually already in your favor because you've got yeah. three tanks on the field. So. Yeah, yeah, and the, the DAC upgrades spot. are are manpower only too, so they don't really delay the tanks coming out. Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that answers my first question. You know, why the seventy five mil Shermans? But yeah, and it makes sense to me. Um, I think if you knew the Tiger was coming two minutes later, you probably don't build that first M four A one. We talked about the motor pool, the the mechanized support center, and you explained that as well. So you hit you hit all my questions. Like I said I thought it was an interesting build. Uh, I thought it was kind of a really cool take on the armored battle group. Um, and obviously you played it really, really well. Uh, for the first half of the game, you were winning on KD. Um, and then it kind of flipped into Ares' uh, favor. So that's kind of a, a good segue. Uh, Ares, you were on the back foot for a while. Um, but you did two things uh, really well that I wanted to point out. You upgraded veterancy on Tier 1, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Uh, which meant that your infantry basically just outscaled the U.S. infantry. Even your MP40 Grens, the way you kept them in like a section of two squads, uh, meant that you would almost always win your initial engagement and force uh, Red to kind of commit additional forces. Um, And then the other thing that you did is harassing that fuel point. So like you were down on VPs, but you kept making that fuel income intermittent. And I don't know if you like knew this or could tell, but like that's what he was lacking, right? And so you prevented him from executing the strategy that he wanted, uh, whether deliberate or not, but it was really effective. Yeah, so I, I kind of knew that, um, you know, from taking it over and over and over. And mm-hmm. I knew he had one tank for the longest time, that being the Hellcat. And I figured that's all kind of, you know, he could muster. I honestly did not know at any point in the game he was floating a thousand manpower. That is ridiculous to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, especially like you're looking at my manpower throughout most of the game, and I am just like ticking at zero consistently. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the main reason, you know, he had more infantry for me. Granted, I could have gone a third grand starter. Uh, mm-hmm. I opted not to. I personally don't like to go for the triple grand because I feel it it oversaturates your mid game manpower income, right? So if yes. I can pull it off with an MG two grand, say two to three piles. I'm at a much healthier state manpower wise when I come to tier two, when I can afford minimum one, usually two tier two squads. That game allowed me to pull out a Pigren and a Strauss with the uh, half track on it too. So I got a lot of value by hanging in there. Um, yeah. So I didn't yeah, think the, he had the. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I said the 251 with the Stoss was a big swing. Right? Yeah. Because not only are the Stoss really durable and do a lot of damage, but the, the Stummel is such a great counter to an infantry heavy US build. And whether you realize it or not, when he skipped motor pool tech, he basically walked right into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Strauss coming out that early too, when you don't have your rifles vetted, they can do mm-hmm. so much more than coming out at a later tier four. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know uh, about his fuel cache though. And I figured that out when I pushed him. And then after that, <laughs> I got bombarded with a bunch of hidden tanks he had in his base. But uh, yeah. I, yeah. I kind of knew it over time, and that's why I was a little bit laxed on the amount of tanks I was fielding, and I kind of just opted for the Tiger. And, you know, I was putting mines down. I was expecting some sort of rush. I didn't expect it to the magnitude he, he was able to fill. Yeah. So, yeah, that engagement with the Tiger and the P4 was epic. Um, super fun. The So a couple other things I liked. One, early on, you had your packs clumped up, and the Hellcat was able to come in and kill your Brumbearer. Um, because the packs were sitting there spinning around. And I think, you know, if they later on in the game, you had them in two separate lanes. And I think that paid off beautifully. One, like vet three pack forties with ambush camouflage are just disgusting. 
they're basically 17 pounders for the first shot um but you're able to basically fend off an armor force twice your size um and and that really swung the game because he was so short on fuel right him losing four vehicles even though he knocked out your tiger like you within three or four minutes had two p4s back on the field and all he could yeah. muster was a hellcat right um the other thing the mine placement putting them in the field where you anticipated your kind of because you you really focus on the center vp and building a strong point there and so putting the mines down in that field which i imagine like you're like if he's going to flank to go after my pack he's going to come this way um and you had one mine unfortunately that like critted your tiger but yep. the second mine <laughs> uh killed one of the hellcats and basically made sure that you got all of his vehicles in that push uh so i've said it a million times and i'll keep saying it mines win games um, absolutely yeah and that that certainly didn't hurt um, my anything mistake that... in that engagement was not swinging wider it, i, I should have mm -hmm. thought about the mines because i know aries is a pretty defensive player i should have gone all the way down to the southern fuel with the with the hellcat blob just to avoid any potential mines and if i did hit any i would still be in the fog mm -hmm. i got kind of impatient <laughs> when you have the tiger on the field there's a psychological element there there's like I will be attritioned out of this game if I do not deal with this now. And that's kind of mm -hmm. what was going through my head. Yeah, and I think you'd been on the front foot for so long, there's also the pressure to like just deal the knockout blow and get the surrender. And that's my weakness there, is that that's how I play. Um, I, yeah. I like to, I'm, I like to I'm always grabbing on him for it. I do the same thing. I, it's just a, like a yearning desire to always attack. And when you play someone who's a little bit more patient, like Ares, uh, they can take advantage of that over time. Um, shit, Ares, I had something else for you. But either way. Uh, I don't know, but I will tell you in two that Swamp makes us a pretty good duo is the fact that, you know, I'd call myself a very passive aggressive player, similar to <laughs> Farage's play style. Um, mm. I'm, I'm very patient and I wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Red will take that opportunity 15 times a game given. <laughs> I won't. I'll take it once yeah. or twice. Um, I think I think all good twos teams have that set up. You've got a hammer. You've got an anvil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So two things. One, your ability to use veterancy and battle group abilities. Um, like you really max them out. Breakthrough for capping. The vet one on the Panzer Grenadier is a vet one on the Stoss. The uh, use of the red phosphorus to break up a rifle squad pushing your Stoss troop. Like just across the board really great use of the abilities and that's what i think separates someone at your level from someone at like red's level even though you guys are only a handful of elo points apart well see no offense, I'm, right? I'm gonna counter argue on that mm -hmm. um a lot of top players don't utilize officer quarters past tier one especially mm -hmm. for tier two and tier three they really look over it sometimes you'll get it hit at tier four it's usually mm -hmm. always a tier one out, especially with a grenadier buff, because you can make three or four grand squads get officer quarters tier one, uh, because it makes you harder to hit at that one. So you automatically get an advantage of an already close tie with the rifleman in their current state. Mm -hmm. um, for every tier, I think it's important to tech if you're going to build into it and you're going to build, you know, somewhat heavily into it. Tier two, if you went luffed your Yeggers are going to be able to camo straight out of the bat. So every engagement, you know, straight up, you're going to get first strike bonus. So whether you're dealing with infantry or you're dealling with tanks, you're going to have the element of surprise. Yeah. Uh, as far as the vehicles, it's not that big of a deal, but it doesn't make a big difference for them. Uh, you go to three, you get your P grins. Their vet one ability is super powerful. It's to not deciding. use it to, what was that? It's game deciding. It, it really is, right? You yeah. can, then you can 1v2 squads as long as you activate that ability and you'll genuinely be fine with it. So yeah. not allowing your grand, your P grands to have that ability, you're just hurting yourself. You're hurting every engagement that you can come across. Your AP yeah. guns can't camo until they're vet one. So giving them the option, the enemy doesn't know you have an AT gun even with the push as long as you keep it far enough back. So when they try to dive you, you retain that element of surprise because they're just going to assume oh, he, he doesn't have an AT gun, right? Yeah. I'm going to push into that and all of a sudden you're getting blapped by a super bonus AT gun up. Yeah. Um, well, and, and it keeps him from using the air burst barrage on the mortar to whittle away at it. You know, it's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a bunch yeah. of stuff that ties into it. Uh, then you go to your four, and not only does it give your P4s the ability to insta shred if you know you decide to activate it, 
Uh, mm -hmm. It also gives your Strauss their Vet 1 ability, and their Vet 1 ability is, by far, in my opinion, the strongest Vet 1 ability in the game for any infantry squad. Mm -hmm. They have the power Magic to sit there and suppression. Just tank. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they have higher output of damage, accuracy, release, receive less damage, and don't receive uh, suppression. Like, yeah. it's the perfect combo. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it helps with your Brumbar if you tech into that, but ultimately... It gets your tiger to that vet one, and it gives it that XP gain bonus, especially if you're trying to tech it. Um, mm -hmm. So it allows, you know, its survivability and just its efficiency is multiplied. Yeah. Same thing works for Panthers. If you were to go to your four for Panthers, uh, it used to be really popular when eight rads are around. You could activate the vet on that, and all of a sudden you got, you know, you got smoke right away. You got invisible AT guns. You got insta win P grens, and then you go into <laughs> tier four. You tech it. You get Panthers that laser mark stuff. So. <laughs> For players to ignore it while it does set your tech progress back a little bit, it makes your engagement so much better. And I don't think I would have won had I not teched. Yeah. Into for, the officer sure. quarters. Yeah, uh, 100%. I think you would have closed it out at like the 25 minute mark. I agree. Yeah. Last thing, uh, just because you've been harping on this with me for quite a bit, tack map usage. So I'm at the point now I can tell when casting if a guy's using the tack map just by the the sheer fact that like your units are always moving and doing something it's like it's because you're literally looking down at the entire map and making moves um and so now when i watch other people i can see like oh he's not in his tack map because this unit's been idle or these these units aren't moving together or they're blobbing you know what i mean uh so pretty cool so shameless plug use the tack map if you want to do, uh, I forget who came up with it, but put a sticky note over your mini map and just use attack map. Red take notes. <laughs> yeah, you caught me. You caught me. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, guys, great game. Thanks for sending it. Thanks for sitting down Thank and, and talking with me. GG's. Yeah. GG's. Yeah, well done, guys. All right. That's all for us, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.